In this video, I'm gonna show you how to hang drywall. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. This channel's all about DIY to save a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask for return for making this video. So we got a lot to do today, so let's get started. When it comes to drywall selection, there are four very common types of drywall. The first being half inch thickness drywall. With half inch thickness, you're gonna have a 30 minute fire rating typically. So that's gonna be the most common drywall installed in houses and garages. And now with that being said, if you need to have a one hour fire rating, most often you're going to be going with 5 8 inch drywall and always check with the manufacturer of the drywall that it's fire rated because it's going to allow you to have a one hour fire rating to meet code in my area. So at the one hour fire rating, we need to separate the garage from living space using the 5 8 inch drywall or if there's living space above, we'd have to install that on the ceiling. So in this video, it's just going to be a detached garage here. So we're just going to be installing half inch throughout. And now with that being said, if I was installing drywall in a house that has a bathroom, I'd have to use the green board. The green board is what's called MR board. And with the MR board, it's going to be moisture resistant. So it's going to be very helpful to have that in the bathroom since there's high humidity when you're taking showers, etc. And then the final type is the purple board. And with the purple drywall, you're going to have moisture resistance and you're going to have mold and mildew resistance. So that's something to keep in mind. Maybe if you're going to be putting drywall in a basement, the purple board would be a good choice. But in this video, we're just installing the half inch drywall. Two common widths of drywall is 48 inch drywall that you see here to my left. And then we got 54 inch drywall that you see here to my right. The most common is the 48 inch. That's going to be used on eight foot ceilings typically as far as the walls go. Now, if you have nine foot tall ceilings, you're going to want to use the 54 inch on the wall. And the reason why that is, whenever you put the two 48 inch sheets together, when they're stacked on top, it's going to give you eight foot. And then the 54 inch drywall will get you up to the nine foot ceiling height. And then as far as the selection for installing it on the ceilings, most often you're going to want to go with the 48 inch because that's going to be your most common choice. And when it comes to length of drywall, 12 foot is your most common length to be installed in a house or garage. And that's because you get the most bang for your buck when it comes to the length whenever you install one sheet. An eight foot long drywall is gonna be very common too, but I like to go with the 12 foot long because it's gonna have the less joints that way, which that's really nice to have when it comes to finishing. When it comes to having a quality drywall installation, most often what's overlooked is having really strong framing as far as having strong drywall nailers in all the corners of the room and also making sure all your drywall is secured to studs that are nailed off properly, etc. Oftentimes when drywall cracks, it's because the house is shifting some and that's going to cause a crack. And it is very hard to get away with having zero cracks in a house or a garage, but with strong framing, you can minimize that. And oftentimes you're going to have studs on your walls, 16 on center, like you see here. And your ceiling joists, which are the trusses in this case, are gonna be two foot on center. So that's very common framing that you'll see in this video. When it comes to drywall hanging tools, I have put together a set of tools you'll want to get in order to hang your drywall. And depending on what technique you use, some of these you may or may not need, but I'm gonna go over all of them real quick. The first thing you'll need is your basic carpentry tools. I got my tool belt on and in my tool belt, I got my chalk line, I got my tape measure, I got a pencil, utility knife. So those are important for this drywall installation. And we'll need to get a drill or impact driver with a drywall setter on the end of it. It's more or less a number two Phillips bit that has a ridge around it so you can't go too deep so you don't sink your drywall screws too far then we got a drywall kicker we got a keyhole saw we got a roto zip or drywall cutout tool there's several different brands you don't have to get roto zip in fact this is a rigid job max that has the drywall cutout tool hooked to it it works great and then we got a caulk gun that's going to hold the 28 ounce tubes 
and the 28 ounce tubes are going to be what you will want to get because when you install drywall it's going to take a lot of adhesive and we have a mark and guard electrical box locator tool this is going to be for rapid location for single gang electrical boxes and then we got our safety equipment as far as eye protection and dust masks and I'm going to be using a drywall panel lift in order to install the ceilings. I highly recommend that if you're limited on help because it's going to eliminate you have to have a scaffolding and some other people to help hold the drywall. So I always use one of those. And we got our step ladder and a T-square. The T-square is going to be useful for making rapid cuts using your utility knife. And I'll show you how to use that here in just a bit. So that is just a quick overview of the tools you'll need. And if you want to purchase any of these tools, I'll put a link in the description below so you can make that purchase for your drywall installation. When it comes to the material used to hang the drywall, I'm going to be using inch and a quarter screws. Some people would use nails, but I highly recommend that you don't use nails because you can have nail pops later on. So screws are superior to nails. And also you don't have to use as many screws as you do nails when it comes to the screw or nail pattern, which I'll explain that more in just a bit. And also I'm going to be using drywall adhesive. This is the liquid nails brand. That's typically what I use when I install drywall. So this is something that's going to help you have extra security when you install your drywall. Be sure to clear out the space in which you're going to be installing the drywall as best you can because it's going to be important so you can move quickly and also it's more safe to not have debris in the way. In order to begin installing the drywall in a room, you always want to start on the ceilings first. And with that being said, as you can see, I already started a row through here. That's because we had to get this wall boarded up because it's winter time. We don't have our garage door in because we need the drywall installed first. So we had to get these installed already. So we're going to actually start with this run. You always want to start with your longest wall that's on your ceiling going perpendicular with your trusses. We always install our drywall perpendicular with the trusses just so you know. This is going to be our first sheet of drywall to continue that first row. Something I like to do on all the drywall and as I mentioned earlier the ceiling joists are two foot on center so I just hook right on the end of the drywall towards the center and then I'll just mark every two foot just a quick pencil mark so we know when we go to screw it off exactly where that ceiling joist is hitting. I'm now going to grab my panel lift and I'm going to place it in the center of the drywall and I'm going to have my helper get on one end I'm going to get on the other. We're going to lift it to where the face is down onto the lift and you also want to extend the supports in order to support this 12 foot drywall. So that looks good there and then we got our little hooks here on the bottom it's going to set on. So if you want to go ahead and something else you want to make sure you do is put your feet down and lock it in a place where you do this. And the great thing about this drywall is it's ultra light drywall so it's really light compared to the standard. Before placing the drywall up on the ceiling I'm first going to place glue onto the ceiling joists and this glue or adhesive is the liquid nails I explained earlier and I like to cut down onto the tube about halfway between the point and where it gets to be the full circumference so about right here. And you want to put just a slight angle on the end, not real steep. And then after you cut that, we need to make sure that we take the end of the gun. And we're going to plunge down the end of the caulk gun. And always do it a few times because there's an aluminum seal in there that if you don't puncture it all the way, it can help impede the flow of the adhesive. So we're going to place it back down into the gun and go ahead and get it started. And then we're going to place this right onto the ceiling joist. Before installing the drywall onto the ceiling or walls, we must first place the adhesive onto the ceiling joist. And we want to put a liberal mount in the center. And then on the ends, we want to put just enough to catch the end of the drywall until we get our next sheet ready. So we want to make sure we don't go too far past four foot. So I'm going to get a quick reference line or a quick reference measurement. So we don't want to go further than here because the glue might set up a little bit before we get to it. So we're going to start here and place the adhesive.
I'm now going to roll the drywall into position. And this is the beauty of this panel lift. It just makes it so much easier. Now once I get it about where it's going to go, simply just going to lock the feet, and then crank it up into place. And after I get it up to about a little over head height, I'm just going to flip this down and then pull these out of the way from the edge of the wall. And now continue lifting it up and I'm going to lock that as well. Now that we got the drywall up this high, I'm just going to make sure I'm lined up here right with the other piece that we had already installed. And also before you install this first row, it's always helpful to chalk a line and then in case your walls out some, it'll take all that out so all your rows will go together real nice. So we're just going to line this up here. And now I'm going to have my helper on the other end, place it with the chalk line or tight against the wall, whichever one you're going with. There, there it is. All right, now I'll tighten it. Yeah. All right. All right, now that my helper has it back to where it belongs, he's going to place a screw in it, so it's going to hold it in position. And now as far as how many screws we place in each ceiling joist, you want a screw about every 12 inches apart. So the best rule of thumb here when it comes to this 48 inch wide stuff is place one about three quarters of an inch from the edge and then put one right in the center and then put one in between. So you end up with five screws per ceiling joist. Right here's the mark we made earlier. So we're gonna place one there. When you set your screw, be sure that you're using a screw setter of some kind so you don't sink it too far because you don't want it to break the paper. So if you take a look, the paper's not broken and it's set just below the surface. That's what you want when it comes to setting the screws. I'm now gonna place that screw pattern in each one of the ceiling joists. It's ideal that you place a couple extra fasteners at the ends of the drywall as well. Now to lower the lift, we simply just take a little tension off, lift up the brake, hold it, and then hold this other handle, then just reverse the lift down. And that's all there is to lowering the lift. Now with the lift out of the way, we can simply screw off the rest of the board. Now in order to finish up this row, we just gotta get a length measurement. We place it tight against this wall, measure right up to the drywall, which is 42 and about 3 8 So we'll take about a quarter inch off because you don't want it too tight because it'll break the drywall if you try to force it in. So we'll cut it about 42 and an eighth in order to finish this row. In order to cut the drywall, I got what's called a T-square. It's simply just going to ride on top of the drywall like so and gives you a nice square line and you can slide it across real easy. So we got to measure over 42 and an eighth and make a mark on the top. And I'm going to keep the factory edge to where it butts against the other factory edge. I'm now going to line the edge of the T-square up with that mark right there. And then I'm going to take my foot and I'm going to hold the T-square bottom tight against the bottom so it doesn't shift around while we're cutting. Then we're going to take our utility knife and just trace right down the side of that T-square. Make a nice cut. And as you can see, that's a nice straight square line. And that's going to be scored so it snaps. Now in order to snap it, we're just going to pull the drywall and bend it. And as you can see, it broke real easy. And I'm now going to take the utility knife and place it right into that groove and go up. Or what you could do is come from the back, place it through and then cut up. I like to go from the front a lot of times because it'll kind of rasp that edge to help clean it up like so. And that's all there is to cutting the sheet of drywall. We're now going to begin the second row of drywall and with this row along with all the other rows we need to make sure that we stagger our joints meaning if our drywall let's say was breaking here on our last row we need to make sure we don't break on that ceiling joist. We need to make sure we go at least a couple back. And now with that being said, we also need to measure the center of any electrical boxes. 
And something else you need to make sure you do is push your electrical wires up really high into the box because when we use our cutout tool, we don't want to risk damaging the wires, which is really important. So we need to measure to the center of these and measure to break our next piece. I'm now going to transcribe the measurements that we got from the ceiling onto the drywall. Now that's the center of our lights. So because of the cutout tool, we don't have to measure the outside of it, just the center. When you start a new row of drywall, it's okay to jump the cut piece to begin with and go right to your first full piece. That way you break the joints evenly and don't have to think about it. Now that we got screws holding the drywall into place and we don't have any screws in the parameter of this center of the light because you can't because clearly the light box is still holding the drywall from going all the way up. So now we need to cut out this light box. In order to cut it out, I'm gonna place safety glasses on because debris will come down in dust and I don't wanna get that in my eye, especially when I'm cutting, looking up at the ceiling. And you could also wear a dust mask here because this does throw dust. So using the drywall cutout tool, I'm gonna to place the cutout tool going right into the center mark that we made. And then I'm gonna go until I find the edge of the electrical box and then I'm gonna jump over and then trace going counterclockwise of that box. So right there's the edge, going to jump over about an eighth. And as you can see, I'm going up against the edge of the electrical box, but I'm on the outside now. Now I'm going to go counterclockwise. That cuts it out really nice. And we can place our drywall all the way up now. Now, as you can see, we can place a screw here into the ceiling joist. And that looks really good. So I highly recommend a drywall cutout tool. After installing that full sheet, as you can see, we went back and installed the cut piece to start the row. And then after that, we just continue running this row. And then we went back and started another row at the same time with, as you can see, a full sheet that had just a little bit cut off to start. And we just continue running to the wall to where we have to cut to finish all the rows at once. I would like to point out in this sheet here, as you can see, we pre-started the screws before we lifted it into place. That's a great technique as well, so that way you can start it on the ground with less effort. I'm now gonna show you how to use a keyhole saw to cut out around a wall like this. First, I need to get a measurement just like we did the other piece of drywall a quarter inch off the edge of this. Now I'm gonna transcribe these measurements to a piece of drywall. I'm now gonna use my chalk line to chalk this top line. Just gonna use my T-square to cut right down my mark here. And I don't wanna go past this line here. And then I'm gonna take my utility knife and cut this blue chalk line. And now I'm gonna take my keyhole saw and cut right beside the line that we scored with our utility knife. So that way when the paper rips, it's a nice clean rip. And all we gotta do is place this into the drywall like so. Has a sharp point so it'll pierce the drywall. Then we just trace right along that line. And now all we gotta do, since the keyhole saw cut that off, we just gotta snap and cut this out. And that's how you use a keyhole saw to cut out around walls and windows if you need to. The reason why I like to use a panel lift is because it's much safer to have a panel lift lift the drywall up into place instead of trying to carry it up step ladders and then lifting it and then trying to screw it with the other hand. It's just much easier using a panel lift. Yes, you do have the extra expense of purchasing the panel lift, but it definitely, in my opinion, makes it for a much safer install. So just keep that in mind if you're planning on installing the drywall yourself.
Something unique that we did when we installed the drywall on the ceiling is we actually used two rows of 54 inch. So that way, instead of having a one foot strip at the end, because if we use the four foot drywall all the way across, we'd end up with a seam that's a foot away from the wall. But because we used two rows of 54 inch, we avoided that. So that does happen sometimes, so keep that in mind. Now that all the drywall is installed on the ceiling, it's time to start on the walls. And now I would like for you to note that this piece of drywall to my right is already installed because I needed it installed to put the mini split in. So we're going to butt tight to it and we're going to break the first sheet on the wall over that header. And it ain't going to be quite 12 foot, but it's better to break it above that header in this case. So that way we have a short seam because if we go past the window, we're going to have a 54 inch seam. So it's better to have that seam in this case there. So we're gonna cut it to length first. When you cut the 54 inch drywall, the T-square is not long enough to reach to the bottom of it. So what I do, I go ahead and cut it like normal, hold my foot against it just like the 48 inch. Go ahead and make our cut. And then I simply just extend the line with the remainder of the T-square like so. And then we just snap it and cut it like normal. In order to prepare the drywall to install on the wall, I'm first going to mark 16 on center so our layout of the studs is on the board. And just a little tip, each of the red marks on a tape measure is 16 on center marks. I'm now going to make the lines where the studs are going to hit. Now I'm now just going to pre-start a handful of screws here on the stud layout. And because this is the top row, I'm going to hang here towards the bottom. Now we're going to put glue on the studs. Now me and my helper is going to grab the drywall. He's going to get on one side and we'll get on the other. We're going to lift it up and just tack it to the studs here at the bottom and place it tight against the ceiling. And then we'll cut out these windows. Now I'm going to get up here on my stepladder and put some here in the middle between the windows to hold it tight in place. Alright, now we need to cut the windows out before we put any more screws in it. I'm now going to take my cutout tool that I used to cut around the electrical boxes. I'm going to cut out around the window. Simply just got to place it on the edge here and then cut it right around the edge. And as you can see, that gives you a nice cut out around the windows. Now I got to do the other one. All right, now we just screw off the drywall every 12 inches. And these are going to take six screws per run because it's 54 inch. When it comes to the screw spacing, you can also go up to 16 inches on the walls, but we usually just try to keep it uniform and do every 12 inches. But with that being said, you can also use nails like I mentioned earlier, but I don't recommend it because of the nail pops. But if you do, you must place nails every 7 inches apart on the ceilings and about every 8 inches apart on the walls. We've now reached this wall to where it transitions from the exterior wall setting on the block. And then as you can see, this wall goes clear down to the concrete. And because of that, we got to put a strip, a six inch strip, either in the middle of the wall or at the top. And you definitely don't want to do the bottom. And the reason why that is, is because whenever you go to finish the drywall, you don't want to be down here trying to finish. It's easier either finish in the middle or finish up top along with the joint that's going to be up there. So we're choosing to go with a six inch strip around the top. So we got to install that before we install these sheets butting up to it. I'm now going to show you how to use a drywall kicker and what this is for as you can see this bottom row there's a gap here when you go to install it instead of trying to lift it up we're just going to kick this up under the edge of the drywall then we're going to pivot right here on this circular part and it's going to lift the sheetrock 
or drywall up tight against the previous piece. So let me demonstrate this. I'm gonna go ahead and get my drywall about where it's gonna be installed. It looks good right there. And now I'm just gonna take my kicker and I'm gonna place it right under the edge of the drywall, kick it up under it. And now we're gonna step on it. And as you can see, it closed that gap using leverage really easy. Now with it up tight, just going to take my drill, place the screws, and that looks really good. So definitely recommend using a drywall kicker when installing drywall. I'm now going to go over the easiest ways that I found to mark the electrical boxes on the wall. The first one is using the mark and guard tool. And this is an electrical box locator. And this simply you squeeze it and it's going to slide right into the single gang box. And not only does it mark your box, but it will also protect your wires. So when we push the drywall up against this, it's going to puncture the drywall. It's going to mark exactly where the box is. So we're going to place one there and place one in the other single gang box. And then next, what we're going to do, we got a double gang box right here, which I don't have a electrical box locator for that. So I simply am going to have to measure off the factory end of our last piece of drywall to the center of the double gang box or the two gang box. 77 inches to the center of this box. Then I'm gonna measure down 14. So I just gotta mark the center and I gotta make sure my electrical wires are pushed far back as far as the electrical wires will go in the box so they miss the cutout tool when I'm using it. And also I'm going to mark these and show you an easy way to cut those out. Let's go to the piece of drywall. I'm now going to transcribe the 77 and 14 measurement down to locate the double gang box. Now I'm just going to put an X here with a circle so I know that's to be cut out. And I also marked where the wires are going to be stubbed through as well. And let me show you how to cut those out. This is where the wire has to poke through the drywall. And this is good for cutting out things like ethernet cable and whatnot. So I'm simply just going to take the keyhole saw, puncture through the center of it, and just kind of twist and make a nice hole there. So that's plenty big enough to stub that electrical wire through. And this is going to be behind the cabinet, so it's not going to really be finished. I'm going to do the same for the other wire. I showed you how to cut around a window using the cutout tool, but I'd also like to show you a kind of advanced technique for ripping down drywall already cut straight down here using my utility knife for the edge of the window. So I'm simply going to take my tape measure and utility knife and right here is the lowest point of where it has to go under the window. And I'm simply going to measure 11 and an eighth is what it needs to be. I'm going to take my tape measure, hold the end of it with my knife blade like this, mark 11 and an eighth at the top of the drywall then use my finger as kind of a guide at the 11 and eighth mark. So I'm simply gonna hold it at that and then scribe right across the drywall. So that's gonna be a place we're going to break it. So I'm now going to cut this with a keyhole saw and then snap it out. So that's an easy way to use your tape measure and utility knife to make a rip cut. Here's a clip of me doing this method using a full sheet of drywall and ripping off the top half. All right, I'm now going to carry my sheet of drywall over here. And in this case, because we're working off of the concrete and this drywall stops six inches above, I have it spaced up with some blocks. And I'm going to fish my wires through those holes that we made. And we're just going to kind of pull those through and let the drywall go into place. I'm now going to place drywall screws in the top to hold it into place so we can cut out our boxes. Now we're going to push the drywall and it's going to puncture the receptacle box locators through it. All right, you can see they pierce through. Now we just got to cut that out. In order to cut this out, just going to take my cutout tool, come in, go to the edge, jump over, then go counterclockwise. And we want to hold tight and try to turn these corners as tight as we can. 
All right, as you can see, it definitely could have been cleaner, but sometimes it gets off, nothing a little drywall mud can't fix. And now we're gonna come here where we located the two gang box and cut it out. And there we got a nice clean cut. Now we can screw off the drywall. After I completed the bottom rows in the downstairs of the garage, I headed up to the upstairs and we started installing the drywall using the same principles as we did below, but as you can see the ceiling height is much lower which made it much easier. We still use the panel lift just for more of an ease of installation. If you're ever having a conversation with somebody and they mention plasterboard or wallboard or gypsum board, 99% of the time they're referring to drywall because those are the other names associated with drywall. There there are several manufacturers of drywall. Some of the most common is USG Corporation, National Gypsum, and Certainteed. They have several different products out there. And Gold Pond is also a very popular one as well. And so you know, drywall typically consists of the gypsum core sandwiched between two layers of paper or fiberglass. And that's really what makes up drywall as a whole. And then some of the cores provide extra resistance for fire and strength, depending on which one you get. And it makes drywall very easy to work with because of the paper thin exterior. That is how we're able to score and snap it so easily. So drywall is a wonderful innovative product that's really came a long ways in the building and construction industry. I would like to do a quick breakdown of the expense for this drywall project. It cost me $3,200 for the drywall board itself and the mud to do this project along with delivery and stocking into this building. And the dimensions of the downstairs of this building is 26 by 38 and this upstairs that you see me installing the drywall in now is 64 foot long and 12 foot wide and as you can see the ceiling has three different rows to make it up. And the downstairs was nine foot ceilings and if you're wondering how many days that me and my helper had in this project, it took us roughly three days to install all of this drywall. And it was something that we didn't really stress over. We kind of took our time and worked on this video as we went. So a so guy that does drywall all the time, I'm sure a crew could have knocked this out in no time. But for us, we don't install drywall on the daily. So this was just a great DIY project for this building I've been working on. If you would like to see how I'm gonna mud and tape all of this drywall, check out this video. It'll help you out. <laughs> 